We've already discussed the first generation of Pokémon on this channel before, but it really does exemplify and establish so many small and intangible elements that's made the series so long-lasting. And with the release of the Insert Reaction Based on Metacritic Image Here Remake Pokémon Let's Go, we decided it would be as good a time as any to cover it again. I mean, sure, there's an inherent joy to catching them all, but if that were the only main hook, games like Monster Rancher and Dragon Quest Monsters would have been far more enduring series. Heck, the concept isn't even that far removed from a Blue Mage in most traditional RPGs, capturing the powers of opponents after facing them in action. We've gone over how strongly the feelings of evolution, maturity, and growing stronger are tied into Pokémon's natural identity, and while that remains true, it's not the entirety of Pokémon's spirit. Evolution is a scary thing. Progression is hard. Hitting a roadblock that you can't overcome is frustrating. Yet, Pokémon is normally free of these roadblocks with new locations normally being able to be handled rather easily. Often, there will be a Pokémon nearby that can handle a difficult obstacle, which serves as a buffer for your team through a rough challenge. And while the series has had some pretty fantastic examples, none have done their job so effectively as Red and Blue's Doug Trio. Doug Trio is located in Diglett's Cave, an area that the player gains access to roughly a fourth of the way through their journey. To this point, Pokémon's kept pretty tame with the number and types of Pokémon that a player can capture. The game mostly has kept a normal, flying and bug-type Pokémon, with the odd Magikarp, Abra, or Pikachu thrown in there to keep the player's imagination as to what could be out there in Rapture. However, the three aforementioned examples aren't even usable without a lot of dedication, and Pikachu has a long period of time through Mount Moon where he's a generally disadvantageous pick for the Pokémon ahead. No matter what team a first-time red or blue player has by the time they reach Diglett's Cave, it'll likely contain a starter, a bird, a bug, a normal or poison type that's either a rodent or a pink blob, a free space dedicated to one of the more unique guys like Geodude or Magikarp, and a Zubat, because everyone always has a Zubat they never level up. Ever. Already, they've gone through a potentially difficult boss in Misty Starmie. Their rival has likely fought them to a fairly even fight with the same kind of Pokémon available, and the idea of branching out your team to cover more types is starting to become more appealing. Enter Diglett. This little mole and his family are the only encounters through Diglett's cave, ranging from level 15 to level 22. Already, this is a huge step up from the surrounding areas, with wild Pokémon beforehand just barely passing into the double digits. But Diglett has two big advantages that prove to be its most important strengths. Its speed and its typing. Diglett is eclipsed by only a handful of Pokémon the player could potentially have access to in its speed, and all of those require a significant degree of dedication and hours of training to build up, compared to just scooping up a mole. Having a blazing fast partner is further complemented by its ground typing and its powerful dig attack. To this point, the few ground types a player could snatch up have been very oriented around their defense, meant to bulk up and take hits, and felt less appealing due to Misty running all over them anyway. Diglett turns the defensive typing into a Blitzkrieg, which is especially useful given that the third boss, Lieutenant Surge, is solely weak to the ground type. However, Diglett on its own does hit a bit of a wall. Lieutenant Surge has Raichu, and your rival's got a Kadabra, both of which are just the slightest bit faster than your new mole buddy. So training him and the rest of your team up would be a good idea, and naturally Diglett's Cave is a great place to do it in. 
The Pokémon here are all higher leveled, flying types can't be hurt by Diglett's strong ground attacks, so it's a great spot to build up your birds, you get a groove going, and then... Appearing at either level 29 or 31, Dugtrio is by far the strongest Pokémon the player is yet to see. And it's wild, meaning the player can have that kind of power on their team right now. But Dugtrio isn't a walk in the park to get. Whereas Diglett was likely the fastest Pokémon a player could get, Dugtrio is one of the top five fastest Pokémon in the game, period. And its huge level disparity with the player gives it speed and power to boot. It has the potential to wipe out an unprepared trainer's entire team. But you want to keep trying at it because you know it's rare, and you want that power. Plus, you probably picked up a Great Ball on the SSN, and there's no better candidate for it. When finally captured, Dugtrio is an amazing boon that the player wasn't just given, they discovered it, and they earned it. Or they went by the recommended team in the official strategy guide, but, you know, that works too. With Dugtrio's power in hand, Lieutenant Surge and your rival pose absolutely no threat. Trainers pass them? Not a problem. Dugtrio blazes past everything, and its level is still overwhelmingly high. The frightening abyss of Rock Tunnel? Dugtrio's got it covered, with high defense rock types being shattered by its powerful dig attack. As more Team Rocket members and bikers appear, poison types become more plentiful, who become Mareep to the slaughter for the three-headed gopher. Yet, despite its incredible upsides, Dugtrio is not a Pokémon that can carry a trainer on its shoulders through the entire game. While its speed is sky-high and its attacking prowess great, Dugtrio's defenses are pitiful, and its hit point total is absolutely abysmal. Anything it can't take down in a single hit will whittle it down, and far quicker than the other members of its trainer's team. The defensive and healing-oriented Grass Gym that serves as the fourth boss is a terrible matchup for the Triple Mole. And it's about at this time that its once impressive stats start falling off a bit. Outside the speed, of course. Even Koga's Gym, which features the poison types Dugtrio loves to bury, contains Pokémon like Hypno, which can take advantage of the Mole's cripplingly low defenses. And while you can continue to level it, giving it a super powerful slash and eventually Earthquake, Dugtrio slowly goes from a ringer to just another part of the team. But that's what Dugtrio is meant to do. Be a temporary shot of muscle and adrenaline while player builds up the rest of their Pokémon team around it. Dugtrio doesn't just solve the immediate problem of the gym and fights in its area, it stays with the trainer and lets them know that they can handle what lies ahead. The Fire Emblem series would classify a character like this as a Jagan, named after an old knight who starts powerful, but grows slowly and is eventually eclipsed by those around him. While this somewhat applies to Dugtrio, it falls off far less harshly than its Fire Emblem counterpart, and more elegantly becomes a part of the team-building aspect that Pokémon wishes to teach. Trio is an accomplishment, instant gratification, and teamwork all wrapped into one. Well, three. And serves as a Pokémon that's endlessly reliable, but not overwhelmingly powerful. It's the perfect helping hand to show how to design for buffering.